The Bully Girl Magazine podcast is your dog-eared audio destination, bookmarking the most compelling tales and insights from the vast canine universe. While we passionately dive into the world of bully breeds, dispelling myths, offering training tips, and discussing breed standards, our scope isn't limited. We cast our net wide to encompass a diverse range of dog breeds, ensuring no tale is left untold. Enhanced by expert interviews and inspiring stories, this podcast is a beacon for responsible ownership and breed education. It's where bully breed enthusiasts meet the broader dog-loving community, fostering unity, understanding, and share joy in every bark and wag. So whether you're out walking your dog or listening at home, be sure to enjoy the show and keep coming back. So glad you're listening to the Bully Girl Magazine podcast. Now, you've probably heard about how important it is for us to get our omega-3 fatty acids. You've probably heard of maybe by omega-3s or maybe you're new to all of this. Did you know that they're also super important for our bully breeds and other dogs? But bully breeds in particular tend to have issues with their skin and their ears. And I mean, if you listen to the show, you've heard me talk about my beloved Pity Blue and all of his issues. So I'm so excited to have uh, the wonderful Dr. Carrie Marshall. She's an epidemiologist and naturopathic doctor with 23 years of experience in the natural product industry, 21 years of clinical practice, and 30 years of health and human research. And she also happens to know a heck of a lot about dog health. Hello, Dr. Carrie. Welcome. Hi, Lisa. It's really great to be on the show. Now, do you prefer Dr. Carrie, Dr. Marshall? Dr. Carrie is just fine. Dr. Carrie. Okay, so... First of all, the first question I always ask everybody is, does your dog do anything funny, interesting, different, unique, something that just makes you laugh or makes you go, oh my goodness, what the heck? (laughs) Well, he's a golden retriever. So if anyone's familiar with goldens, they have lots of quirky behaviors. Yeah. Um, So so we'll just use that. There's there's plenty (laughs) to laugh about with goldens. Um, But, you know, he just is such an uh, attention grabber. Like he just really wants people to touch him no matter where we are. And he will do anything until you just you just put your hand calmly on him. And he has this favorite loop that we like to walk. It's three and a half miles. It's a it's a nice walk. Oh, that's great. It is his favorite thing to do. And I live near the beach and we have to drive over a bridge to get to the island. So as soon as we go over the bridge, he just starts wagging his tail. He knows exactly where we're going. <laughs> and um, I have to really commit. If I walk this loop alone, you know, I can do it in 40, 45 minutes. But if I'm with him, it can take up to an hour and a half. Because exactly. he's the mayor on the loop. He has to stop and have everyone pay attention <laughs> to him and touch him. And, and he doesn't go up to just anyone. Let me, I guess, be clear that he knows who will and who won't want to pet him. He's a right. sucker for people who, um, you know, have had Goldens or love Goldens. And he spots them. Like he will, he just knows something about the way they're looking at him. And then inevitably he goes right up and will say, oh, I used to have a Golden that I love. Oh, that is <laughs> so, so sweet. Yeah. So he's just, his walks around the loop are, you know, a, a long loop with him. So <laughs> twice. Oh, that's so nice. You know, my, my blue, my pity, he's such a baby and we get, put him in the car, we put him in a seatbelt and he'll just cry. Like, even if it's a three minute drive to get to the woods, he cries the whole time. So if you're going to take him anywhere more than a few minutes, you're going to have to get him tired first. So if I'm going to go to the beach, which is 45 minutes from here, I have to take him to the woods to run or somewhere to run off leash first and then put him in the car. And then he'll cry a little less. <laughs> Always something. <laughs> Always something. Now, Dr. Carey, when did your love of dogs begin? Um, well, from the day I was born, we always had Aww. dogs. I've always had a dog in my life. We had an Afghan when I was a baby. And oh, wow. yeah, and you know, they're a pretty intense personality. Let's just say they don't love people, but the this dog and I had a pretty good relationship for some reason. And then there was a couple of years off and then we had a greyhound for many years. We had rescued a greyhound and I was a pretty competitive athlete and a runner. And so I loved running with my greyhound. Um, it was just great. I mean, it was great for me, great for the dog to get the exercise. And then when I was on my own, I just, you know, have always had at least one, sometimes two dogs. So. Oh, that's awesome. You know, I don't know anything about Afghans. What are they like? I know you mentioned they're not like super, is it affectionate or are they more standoffish? They're not super affectionate. They're very aloof. They know how pretty they are. Uh Um, (laughs) They take a lot of grooming. Um, You know, they typically have really long hair. Um, Yeah. And they're a pretty big dog too. So as a little little kid, I mean, now if I look back and see pictures, like I was so small compared to the dogs. I was always love up on the dog. Well, let's jump into the topic today. Omega fatty acids are so important. Now, I've had you on my programs. It's your health. I think I've had you on Health Power. For people who don't know, 
I've spent 25 years in health media and switching to dogs has been such a joy. I'm still interested in healthy living. I still do health power, but I have to say my heart belongs to the dogs. So anything we can do to improve their life, improve their health is super important. So first of all, what are omega fatty acids? Well, let, let's talk about fat. Just say sure. Some, just do fat as a snack. Yeah. Because, you know, fat is one of the three major macronutrients, carbohydrates right. and protein being the other two. And so within fats, we have kind of two major classes of fats, those that have double bonds and those that don't. And the ones that don't are fats like saturated fat or even trans fat, unfortunately. Um, and those tend to be not quite as good for us, although some of the saturated fats do have some health benefits. Um, whereas the, the fats that have, um, they're called unsaturated, they have double bonds. And depending how many double bonds and where those double bonds are, those are the either mono or polyunsaturated fatty acids. So mm. the monos have one double bond and that's, you know, olive oil is the most common one that we know of. Um, avocado oil has a lot. I of love oil. avocado oil. Yeah. But the unfortunate <laughs> thing about avocados is they're also high in omega sixes. And they are? Gonna, yeah, there's, okay, you're blowing my mind right now because I, like I just, I'm like, I've been in health for so long. I've always just heard they're just great for everything and all the good fats and all yeah. right, go on. <laughs> yeah, a lot of heart healthy aspects to it. And, you know, we can definitely talk about the omega three, six balance because in, in all different dog foods and dog treats, there's a lot of different types of fats. And sometimes too, you'll see things like soy and corn and canola and safflower. Those are all the plant seed oils. And those are all the omega six fats. We're going to talk a lot about omega-3 fats today. Right. And those are a little bit different. The omega-6s and 3s are really interesting in that they compete against each other. In, in dog bodies and animal bodies, they compete for the same pathways, the same enzymes. A lot of people probably are familiar with things like flaxseed and chia seed and even walnuts as, as more plant-based omega-3 sources. And you can certainly find pet treats with things like flax and yeah. Um, flax seed and flaxseed oil and, you know, the flaxseed meal and things like that. And those are all great sources of the 18 carbon omega-3s um, that, and when I say 18 carbons, it's alpha linolenic acid. When you hear so much about the health benefits of omega-3s, it's more specifically around the EPA and DHA, again, for humans and pets. And unfortunately, the conversion from that 18 carbon ALA to the 20 carbon EPA, and then DHA is 22 carbons, it has to elongate and desaturate, meaning it has to get another carbon, but there's also more double bonds. And that elongation and desaturation rely on two very important enzymes, the delta-6 and the delta-5 desaturase enzymes. And it's a rate limiting step in, in our bodies and dogs' bodies. And so while I would never say don't eat flaxseed or don't eat chia or walnuts because we need all the omega-3s we can get. It's yeah. certainly not that preformed EPA and DHA that has all the health benefits. On the omega-6 side is where everything competes. All those plant seed oils that I just mentioned, corn, soy, safflower, even avocado, unfortunately, they're very mm -hmm. high in that omega-6 pathway. And the 18-carbon LA, linoleic acid, converts to arachidonic acid which is that 20 carbon and the 20 carbon arachidonic acid competes with EPA. And unfortunately, arachidonic acid has tons of inflammatory molecules as an output from it, whereas EPA has anti-inflammatory molecules. And if you're consuming, again, both human or dog, right. more omega-6s, more of these plant fats in your body, you will have a tendency to make more inflammatory molecules. So the body utilizes whatever is in the reserve store at the moment. And, you know, much like humans, pet food has an abnormal imbalance of omega-6 to omega-3 fats. Like I just bought my dog some, a new bag of dog food and I try and buy a salmon-based dog food because even in the base of the dry food, I really want to make sure that there's more omega-3s because things like yeah. chicken and turkey intrinsically have omega-6 fats. They actually have preformed arachidonic acid, just like fish would have preformed EPA and DHA. So that's where eating things like seafood is healthier than eating beef or chicken or turkey um, because of the preformed 20 carbon omega-3s or omega-6s. That was right. 
<laughs> yeah, that <laughs> it's like, oh, <laughs> yeah, that is a lot, but it's very interesting. Well, you know, I'm a big fan of Yum Wolf, which is they use a, a wonderful omega three blend, and it's done wonders for Benji. Like it's helped him with his arthritis, and his coat is shinier. Unfortunately, Blue has a ton of allergies. You know, Benji's a lab. Blue is a pity getting into these allergies. And so he eats uh, ground turkey, squash, peas, a couple other things, cauliflower. But I know that he's missing those omega-3s that I need. So uh, that's a whole other question. But I do worry that most dog foods are very high in seed oils, which yes. cause the inflammation. And I think that's what's so important, right? To focus on that, what we're feeding our dogs makes a big difference. It really does. And you're absolutely right. And one of the big reasons for that is because the seed oils, agriculturally speaking, are significantly cheaper. And, you know, we commoditize those things. That's why it's ubiquitous in our human food chain too. And unfortunately, pet food kind of even gets the second tier of things under, you know, things that are fit for human consumption. So when you're, when you're looking at, you know, in the industrial food network. So it's just, it, that's what makes certain foods more affordable because right. they're using inferior quality oils. Um, you know, not to bash on whole foods, but I'm going to use their, they have a 365 sure. brand. Um, and, you know, thankfully that brand is less expensive than some of the other, um, you know, brands so that people can, you know, get these healthier foods at a lower option. But that's the thing is they're presumably healthier, but they're really not. And I'll use their organic salad dressing as an example. Um, Italian salad dressing, right? Like what is yeah. the oil that I'm Italian? So I, you know, I know the answer. What is the oil? I know that's the answer. Dressing? What is it? Olive oil. Well, it should, should be. be. Yeah. Oh, oh, I thought you said what it should be. Oh, I know what it is. I know it's sunflower oil, which makes me insane, right? Yeah, I I believe last I looked, it was soy oil or oh, soy. Okay, because almost wet. everything has yes. and there was almost. no olive oil in it whatsoever. No, because so it's more expensive. You th right, and you think you're buying this healthier thing because of potentially a store that you're getting it from, but they're using right. cheaper commoditized oils because it does make it more affordable, but it makes it less healthy too. Because yeah, you know, going back to you know what I said about what is in the reserve, right? So we right. are all. And same with dogs and especially allergenic dogs. And let's face it, bullies are an allergenic breed and so are golden retrievers. I have oh, I a lot of the same problem, yeah, with skin issues and allergies and ear infections and, mm -hmm. you know, issues with itchy coat and things like that. So there's a lot of overlapping things. Um, and a lot of that comes down to the amount of inflammation that's in the body in general on a day-to-day -day basis and how your body reacts or responds. Um a lot of people don't know that the majority of the immune system lives within the digestive system. So in humans, it's actually 70% of the immune system is in our gut. I don't know what it is for dogs, but I imagine it's, you know, relatively similar. It's going to be a significant amount, which right. means what we put in our body or what we feed our dogs is going to tremendously impact their overall inflammatory health. That's why dog food matters or even dog treats, because all of that becomes a part of their cells. Yeah. So every cell membrane in mammals is a double phospholipid membrane, meaning that it's a double strand of, and if you remember with the, you know, fatty acid in the tails and yeah. it's, it's so literally every cell in the body is made of fat. So whatever you feed your body or your dog's body is going to make up the cell membrane in every part of our body from our heart to our brain, to our skin, to our muscles. And those fats are going to, depending on what type of fat they are, if they're saturated fats, they're going to be stiffer fats and, and not flexible fats. Whereas if you have these longer carbon chains, like I said, the EPA and DHA, that's 20 or 22 carbons, it's much longer. And the more double bonds, it makes it more fluid and flexible. So if anyone remembers that science term from biology, the fluid mosaic model. Oh, yeah. Well, that's, that's all about cell membrane integrity which relies on the fats that live within those cells. And if you have these longer polyunsaturated fatty acids or even monos from olive oil, you will have more flexible membranes, meaning that nutrients can go in more readily and waste can go out. So when you're dealing with any chronic inflammatory condition, you literally need to change that cell membrane to allow it to respond better to a situation. Because if a dog or if us, is exposed to, let's just say pollen as, as an example. We know bullies get a lot of nasal and you yeah. know, sinus and respiratory issues. You know, if they're 
if they're being exposed to different allergens on a regular basis, their body needs to be able to have a higher reserve of omega-3s and 6s so that when that exposure happens and the body in turn releases these, these what's called um, acosinoids, which is a mm-hmm. downstream metabolite, it either causes inflammation or no inflammation, depending if you have omega-6s or 3s. You know, I want to jump into some of these issues in particular. Uh, you talked about, I mean, there are the environmental allergies, there's the food allergies, the skin conditions, we've got hot spots. Uh, Blue has seborrhea right now. I also believe he has yet his 100,000th ear infection. But since taking him off um, regular dog food and putting him on these foods that I give him, again, the turkey, the squ- acorn squash, the yeah. peas, he is less itchy. He does get less ear infections, yeah. but there's still some of it there. Uh, what I did, and I don't know what you think about this, and this is going to probably, I'm not woo-woo, but, and I, if you are, that's fine. Not you. Well, anybody listening. Um, but I actually started doing muscle testing with him, which to see me seem completely out of like this world and I don't get it. And if people are curious, you can Google muscle testing, but honest to goodness, every single thing this integrative vet has told me about blue and what he can and can't eat has been hundred percent accurate. That's all I can say. So I'm going with it yeah. and he's been doing so much better, but he's still going to get those ear infections just being this, you know, pit bull. They just tend to get that. So what are some of the things we can do and how can having more omegas, or is it more omega threes and less sixes? It sounds like, can that help with some of these skin, ear infections, seborrhea, other things like that? So research in omega threes in general has shown that it strengthens the skin barrier. And so that's where, you know, it's going to control things like moisture um, that can come in and out. And like I said too, before with just cell membranes, skin is very much the same. You know, there's things that come in and there's things that go out of the skin and skin in general, again, mammals, dogs, people, skin is one of our major organs of elimination. So when we're trying to get things out of our body, we pee them out, we poop them out, we breathe them out, but we also sweat them out. So things move out through our skin. And so that's sometimes where you can see that there's more of an an internal imbalance, potentially in the digestive system that needs correcting in order for the skin to be healthy. Because when there's a um, imbalance, maybe even in the microbiome, um, you know, that's really important to make that correction. So controlling the inflammation within the gut, but also the microbiome. So, you know, I definitely, you know, for a dog with chronic skin condition um, or even chronic ear infections, you're going to want to do a probiotic. So getting a good probiotic capsule and putting it on the dog food, but definitely I would consider adding, you know, not just modifying the diet with reducing the omega-6s and, you know, if you can integrate salmon or something into the diet, but definitely doing an omega-3 um, supplement. You can get some great, there's some super high quality companies and products that you can get liquid omega-3 fish oil and just put it right on the food. Yeah. Yeah. Yum Wolf has a really great salmon oil that I really, that mm-hmm. is great for Benji's. Well, I haven't given it to Blue because I keep forgetting it to bring it to the integrated vet so she can test it and see if he reacts to it or not. What do you think about, Just I'm just curious, what do you think about muscle testing? So kinesiology is the other word for it. Um, oh, it's it, well, that's the fancy word for it. Um, yeah. You know, I've definitely played around with it. And I've, you know, like you just said, I've seen instances where, you know, some things that I know are good, some things that I know are bad, um, you know, have tested positive or negative. There's also a little bit of intention intentionality, if that's the correct word for it, that can go into it. Um, yeah. I wouldn't use it as an ever as a means of definitive diagnosis or even, okay. um, you know, as a means of definitive treatment. And only because, you know, sometimes I have seen things that, you know, you and again, I'm going to speak on behalf of humans, something that, you know, someone shouldn't be taking. And they're like, but my doctor tested muscle tested me for it and said it's OK. Oh, you know, like, right. Nobody should be taking that. <laughs> you okay. know, so I've seen those instances. So as much as I think it can be an effective tool to give you an idea about your body's reaction, it shouldn't be meant to be it as an absolute. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I, like I said, it's been going well with blue, but I am wondering if there's something else because he's still itchy and they say it takes a while. And, you know, I'm just curious what else I can be doing for him. What are some other things we can do for our dogs who have these issues? Um, So nettles is actually one of my favorite Mm -hmm. things. Nettle, nettle leaf. It's typically, it grows wild in the spring everywhere. Um, typically you can find it, um, is, is a tea or a capsule, but nettle as a botanical is extremely anti-inflammatory, but also antihistamine. 
So, oh. you know, in humans, I always recommend it for allergies and things like that. Um, even allergies to pets. So like a lot of folks have allergies to dogs and cats, um, yet they still have them. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I would. You know, yeah, I, I totally understand that one. Um, so even drinking nettle tea, if, you know, make a cup of nettle tea, put some into the dog water bowl as well. They can lap it up. It's pretty flavorless, but, you know, make a cup for yourself, make a cup for the dog and just, you know, you could integrated into their their water bowl um it's it's a very i'll say benign botanical it's one of the few botanicals that is deemed to be safe during pregnancy so if we can give it to pregnant women we can definitely give it to our pets Um, yeah that's great yeah it's really naturally high in minerals too which is also why it's very nutritive tea um, or nutritive botanical too so um so just and the best way you're saying is through the tea rather than like if there's a capsule. Cause I, you know, for Benji, I have to give him some medication mm-hmm. um, and I have put it in peanut butter, but you're saying, is it better to just use some tea? You know, the tea, well, first of all, focus on the nettle leaf and not the nettle root because oh, okay. plant parts, when we're talking about botanicals are incredibly important. Nettle root has its own um, and distinct and different medicinal actions than mm-hmm. nettle leaf. So, um, so that's going to be an important distinguisher because you can get nettle leaf tea very easily, but a lot right. of the capsules that exist are the nettle root. So if you oh, are okay. looking at capsules, just make sure that there's no root in it because the nettle root can impact hormone balance. And that's not necessarily a pathway that you want to go up <laughs> down if you're really looking at reducing inflammation and histamine. Right. Now you're a naturopathic doctor. So are you open at all to, for example, I was told that, you know, I don't want to give the, um, oh my God, I can't believe I'm forgetting the name of it. It's, it's a shot. It'll come to me that I give to blue or I did give to blue. I haven't needed it as much to help with his itching. And the vet said, well, this was a more mainstream vet said, well, you can try Benadryl. Mm-hmm. So if I had to choose between giving him a shot that costs $300 a month or, and I'm kind of concerned about it or Benadryl once in a while, I mean, where do you stand? Are you like hardcore natural or do you have like a balance of, you know? being in the middle on things. Yeah. Well, I'm also in public health as an epidemiologist. So I guess I'll put it. I love that. (laughs) That's true. Um, Woohoo, do public health people. (laughs) Yeah. So in a lot of my work, you know, prior to becoming a naturopathic doctor, you know, I, my first lab job was in the nuclear medicine department. So I have complete respect for conventional medicine and there's absolutely a time and place for it. My daughter has some anaphylactic reactions. So I have Benadryl on me. You know, I, I've got yeah. it in my car, I've got it in my travel bag. You know, there's there's just certain medicines that are absolutely needed. I mean, if you saw my travel bag, I travel internationally for work a lot. And there's just certain medications I always travel with because I know I can't get them if there was an emergency situation in right. some places. Um, so, yes, I definitely am that type of practitioner with, with my own patients where, you know, I'll say, why don't we get diagnostics so we know exactly what we're dealing with? figure out what your, you know, primary care or what the specialist is recommending, and then we'll come up with a plan together. Um, yeah, that makes it's sense. important to really, you know, get an absolute diagnosis, again, whether it's a pet or a person so that you know what you're dealing with, and you can't do that without conventional medicine and diagnostics. So yeah, oh, it's side point. That's a shot. And it's yeah. so expensive. They're like, oh, he's a big dog. He's 77 pounds. He's not ginormous. I mean, it's so expensive. And they're like, well, we can teach you how to do it yourself. So I said, well, I'll have my husband do that. I'm not, I, I don't know. I guess I could give him an injection if I had to. We haven't done that because he hasn't needed it. Yeah. And it's been about two months into his shot. It's supposed to last like four weeks. Yeah. So that's good. But now he's starting to get a little itchy. And like I said, I think he has an ear infection and it's just so exhausting. So when people are buying their dog food, do they want it? Because I know it can be difficult and it really depends on how much money you can spend and what you can afford. But I would think of those oils that you mentioned, you'd want to see like how, if they're in there or have you seen alternatives where they don't use the seed oils? Like yeah, what, I mean, definitely what would you recommend? Read the ingredients. I mean, some, some actually add fish meal um, oh. or even a protein source. You know, there, there's a huge spectrum of dog foods, right? Like depending, yeah. you know, if you're going to Target to buy your dog food versus a local health food store that really invest in having super high quality ones, you know, those really high quality ones are going to pay particular attention to some of these allergenic components. So, you know, and again, we've really come a long way in pet food. There's definitely hypoallergenic pet food, um, which will, you know, have lower amounts of of omega-6s and potentially even some omega-3s added to it as well. 
Yeah, I did have blue on, I forgot which brand, but it was one for dogs with allergies. And honestly, he still just was as itchy and got as many ear infections. And that's why I said, I got to do something drastic. And that's why I went to this vet who did the muscle testing and also knows a lot about nutrition. And I think if you can make your dog's food, I mean, it's kind of a pain, especially the acorn squash. Oh my God, it's such a pain in the ass. Um, and it's, they're expensive too, mm-hmm. usually because they're heavy, but at any rate, I, I, he's doing much better. So I think that's something to look into. Where do you stand on like raw food? Cause I cook his. Um, you know, again, I think that ultimately depends on the quality of where you're getting the raw meat because, you know, not all raw meat, just like everything else is created equal or do you know how fresh it is? So, you know, I used to live in North Idaho and had access to really, you know, fresh Mm -hmm. meat. And so something like that, I would have a lot more confidence um, versus some of the other places I've lived and just going to the grocery store and buying raw meat. You know, there's, there's a huge spectrum on that quality control perspective. So I think it's important to understand the source. Yeah. Um, Let's jump back in though, real quick, um, going back to something that you mentioned, salmon oil versus yes. um, other omega-3 oils, which typically come from, um, you know, if it's a cod, it comes from cod or cod liver oil, it comes from cod, but um, sad, sardine and anchovy is what most traditional fish oil comes from. And salmon oil, most of the salmon oil that's in the market has lower levels of EPA and DHA relative to some of the other fish oil concentrates that have more EPA and DHA. So just, you know, that's just an important thing to know. They have the other fatty acids that are in there, but it's not, there's, there's a difference between like an unconcentrated versus a concentrated fish oil in terms of how much EPA and DHA you're getting. So companies like Nordic Naturals have some good um, pet products for omega-3s. Oh, that have oh, a I love them. DHA. Yeah. Um, so, you know, even on, I have a website, Virtue Health Solutions, that has a lot of human products and we do have the, the dog omega-3s as well, because within my 25-year career in the industry, um, I've spent 20 years doing omega-3s. And so, and including with all the pet stuff too, going oh, back, to, we formulated a horse formula when I, um, I used to be the chief medical officer at Nordic Naturals. And so back then oh, wow. the head of sales was a horse lover. So we had even a, <laughs> I formulated a horse product too. Oh, that's great. So you have some that you sell yourself on your site? Yeah. So Nordic Naturals has a liquid and a capsule pet product. I just find the liquid to be easier because you can just pour it right over the food, but some people prefer to do the capsules. Oh, that sounds great. Yeah. And if you look at my website too, you can see the breakdown of body weight of either a cat or a dog and how much you should be giving. Because really, just like with humans, it comes down to, it's not one size fits all. Um, yeah. you know, it's, it's really comes down to body weight, but it is important that our dogs are getting these. Exactly. Absolutely. Just like humans. Right. Um, you know, and if, if you're not getting in, in the diet, it's, it, it's, it's just not there. And so then when your body, like I said, is exposed to that allergen, or even, you know, if we get sneezed on and our immune system has a reaction and we don't have the right fatty acids in the membranes to respond because we're not consuming it we're going to respond with an inflammatory response rather than an anti-inflammatory. Um, I'm so glad we're talking about this because my husband takes his every day and uh, it is Nordic Naturals. And <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, I got to start doing that. And then I'll forget. I'm like, oh yeah, I got to start doing that. And then I'll do it for a while. My skin looks better. My hair looks better. I feel better. And then I fall off the wagon again. I don't know why. It's like, how hard is it to take a pill? But anyway, I'm sure people yeah. can relate. Well, no, it's, it's, you know, it's the same thing with our dogs and, you know, yeah. with our kids too. Sometimes we take better care of our pets and our kids than we do ourselves. Yeah, that's true. And, you know, <laughs> I always remind my patients, you have to take care of yourself if you want to take care of everyone else too. Well, it's funny you say that because like, I'll spend an entire day cooking squash and turkey for blue. And my daughter will be like, what's for dinner? And I'm like, I don't know. You just eat what's in the house, like yeah. figure it out. And here I am like spending all my time cooking for my baby. Exactly. And she's like, what about me, mom? <laughs> well, there's turkey and squash. Yeah. <laughs> she likes the squash, not the turkey so much. Actually, one good thing about the turkey, I should say, is that it, I get the kind that doesn't have any hormones or antibiotics or anything like that. And I can find that at the regular grocery store. I'm sure it's not as good as joining like a CSA for a farm or something, but I figure at least it's, you know. Absolutely. And this goes without saying about, you know, people always say, do I have to eat organic or give my pet organic? Um, There's certain foods that, you know, obviously if you can eat a a whole organic diet, great, but who can afford that? Number one, and has access to that. So I've always said at all cost, if you can get hormone and antibiotic free products, you know, especially for animal products, then you're winning. 
Um, yeah. And so, you know, if that's, you know, beef, chicken, turkey, eggs, things like that, um, if you're able to get free range eggs, but they're not organic, you know, they're still doing pretty good. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. Now with the, uh, the liquid that you put on the dog's food, the omega threes, mm -hmm. do you do it twice a day, once a day? Like, cause if you feel no, like I, I feed my dogs twice a day, to be honest, today. um, and it's more that, you know, for me, cause I've been doing this for so long with patients and pets, um, it's about compliance. And okay. most people are not going to remember to do things twice a day, or they just forget that second one. So I would rather get a full dose in of something once rather than a half dose and the second dose be skipped routinely. And the thing about fat um, is that it's best absorbed. And this is a question, again, people always ask, should I take my fish oil with or without food? Oh. That is best absorbed with fat. Okay. And so this is true for fat soluble vitamins too, like A, D, E, and K, that when you're taking them, they will be best absorbed with fat in the diet. So, you know, your the the turkey obviously is is plenty of fat, but that's where you just want to make sure it's being mixed with food that has fat in it. All right. Well, this is so interesting. Is there anything else that you wanted to add? And of course, I'm going to get all your information of how we can find you and your great website and all the good stuff we talked about. But is there anything else you wanted to add today? Yeah, I think just in general of jumping away from fat for a minute is just sure. hydration. You know, at the end mm -hmm. of the day, all the issues that we talked about, no matter what the breed of dog is, um, a lot of it comes down to hydration too. And we talked about healthy moisture balance in the skin with omega threes. You also need that water intake too. So, oh, okay, really ensuring that there's adequate water um, can really, you know, help keep the moisture balance in skin, but also. Um, circulation is going to be increased when there's enough water and also all that ability for elimination. As I mentioned, when we get rid of things in our body, there are things our body doesn't want. They're metabolic breakdown products. So we need to pee them out, poop them out, push them out through our skin. And so a lot of that depends on hydration and the ability to do that. Um, if a dog is showing some constipation, then, you know, definitely more water intake is needed. So keep an eye on that as well. No, oh, that is so helpful. All right, Dr. Carey, tell us all the ways we can find you. Um, so I mentioned there's that website, Virtue Health Solutions. It's actually V-I-R-T-U Health Solutions. Virtue oh. spelled um, in Italian. And I also have my drcarrymarshall.com website for any people interested in people visits. Um, but the Virtue site has a lot of different products that I've recommended to my patients and family and friends over the past 20 years. So um, so yeah, those are two great places to find me. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. You know, as a big health person, I want great health for our dogs as well. And if you want to learn more, you can go to bgmwarehouse.com. If you want to, let me show you my shirt. XL bully. It says bigger is always better. We love our big bullies. I love all bullies, any size. Uh, you can also go and get the bully girl app on Google play or from the app store on Apple. And you can follow me see my beautiful pit bull. I wish I could shrink them so I could just like put them right here and my lab, of course. Just go to uh, TikTok, Instagram. I don't do Twitter as much or X. Um, <laughs> at Lisa Davis MPH. Everyone keep coming back to the Bully Girl Magazine podcast. Thanks so much. Yeah.